Hello and welcome all of you to this very special edition of the NDTV Dialogues. On the show with us is His Holiness the Dalai Lama. He's one of the world's most respected and loved spiritual leaders. He's also Nobel Laureate for Peace and described by many as a rock star as well. He's joining us and thank you very much, Your Holiness, for being with us on the NDTV Dialogues. In your 80th year, it's a time when we see violence around us in the world. Terrorism is now being seen as a common threat, whether it's uh, we've been victims in India, we've seen it in Lahore in Pakistan, in Brussels, in Ankara. Are you, are you still optimistic for world peace? Buddhism has uh, preached peace throughout. How do you preach world peace at a time like this? Uh, since I think the last uh, 30 years, uh, I have serious discussion with scientists and also some educationists uh, and other sort of some I say knowledgeable people now. Then, you see, uh, some occasion, the scientists, you see, they mentioned basic human nature is more compassionate. Mm -hmm. They have some reasons. I'm not necessarily going to repeat these reasons. So then, when I heard that, uh, I really uh, convince now. You see, basic human nature is more compassionate. Therefore, there is real hope. If basic human nature is anger or negative emotion, then no hope. So that's not, and then of course, I'm Buddhist. So the Buddhist literature, particularly Nalanda tradition, say mm -hmm. Buddha nature. All sentient beings have Buddha nature. So that means ultimate nature is positive. Mm -hmm. So therefore, now I fully convince if we make sort of effort, realistic way, not through prayer, not through simple meditation, but through education. Actually, today, we are going to discuss about that. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, I think education changed the world. The so now, education, existing education system is not uh, adequate. Present existing education is mainly oriented about material value, external value, not internal value. Would you like to see, because the irony, sir, is that so much of this killing of bloodshed is in the name of religion. Hmm? W as a religious, as a spiritual leader, why do you think religion is being distorted across religions hmm? to justify violence? Do you think violence can be justified in terms of a holy war in any sense? No, I think certainly not. Uh, but then again, you see, we have to think. The I think since human history, war is part of human history, including sometimes war in the name of religion. But that's past. Mm -hmm. When the reality, you see, not only continent to continent, but also you see, within the uh, continent, you see, different people more or less self-sufficient. Then maybe. All right, <laughs> fight with your neighbor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and destruction of your neighbor is your victory. Now, today's reality completely changed. Mm -hmm. Destruction of your neighbor is destruction of yourself. Because your future depends on them. Their interest, your interest, heavily interdependent. Mm -hmm. So now, global level, uh, not only nation to nation, but continent to continent, heavily interdependent. East world need West. West world need East. Like similar North world or uh, South world. That's the, and then climate sort of condition. All these, and the human population, much increasing. So now, time come. We have to think humanity, rather than my nation, my community. 
Because you see, we are social animal. Any social animal, even you see some bees, some ants, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily you see they very intelligent, but biologically, you see they have the sense of community, work together for survival. So we human being, this marvelous intelligence. Now we must use this intelligence, uh, common sense. We should not be slave of anger, hatred, uh, and arrogance. So therefore, I think basic human nature is compassion, compassionate. Uh, then this intelligence now should sort of say the use uh, strengthening that basic human nature. Mm -hmm. That's lacking now, today's education system. When we have words like Islamic terrorism, or even when you've heard uh, focus being talked about in Myanmar, that why are Buddhists against Rohingya Muslims there? Yes. Do you think labels or religions should be attached to terror? Do you think mm -hmm. there is a genuine problem? People who follow religion, they also human beings. <laughs> <laughs> they, they also you see, have the negative sort of emotions also there. Now, the, the point is, whether we accept religion or not, up to individual. Once we accept any religion, we should be very sincere, very serious. And religious sort of concept should be part of our life. Then, all major religious tradition carry same message, message of love, mm -hmm. forgiveness, tolerance, contentment, self-display. So all major religious tradition in spite of different philosophical views, all have same sort of message, so same potential. I have many friends among Christians, uh, Christianity, or Christians, uh, among Muslims, among Jews, so on. Wonderful people, like here picture, Mother Teresa, mm -hmm. uh, and some others of Muslim, my friend, wonderful people. So you're the sad problem. when you hear of Buddhist atrocity, uh, Buddhist violence in Myanmar against Rohingyas? So I think, I, I are think you saddened world, when you hear that? World, so to, I say consider Buddha a symbol of peace, but follow of Buddha also sometimes <laughs> create a problem. So therefore, these are, you see, the uh, religious belief, wonderful, but the human weakness is sometimes become upper hand. Now for that reason, the... I think almost 2,000 year old Indian sort of uh, practice of religious harmony is now really uh, uh, we need firstly recognize this sort of Indian tradition, religious harmony. It's, it's not only something uh, good, but this now promote and share to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. so, so therefore, uh, religious harmony, if we make or say, the, or say study, not just emotion, mm -hmm. but use human intelligence, what this religion carry, what kind of philosophy, then we find differences. Mm -hmm. Then we have to ask, what is the purpose of this different philosophy? Mm -hmm. Same purpose. Mm -hmm to promote uh, compassion, mm -hmm. to bring real sort of conviction about the value of compassion. Mm -hmm. Concept of God, God, infinite love, uh, merciful. So that's almost like our father. That kind of concept, very, very powerful. You see, to bring inner strength and believe the uh, value of love because our father infinite love you then other tradition like uh, sangha philosophy and jain philosophy buddhist philosophy no creator but rather it's a self creation mm -hmm. you that also is a very very sort of powerful sort of method you see to bring conviction everything uh, i mean future <laughs> of your life depend on yourself Yes. So therefore, you see, you should behave well.
if you today short-sighted, narrow-minded and negative emotion doing something, uh, something uh, consequences you have to face. You talk to your holiness of India's great religious tradition and India is unique in the world that every religious tradition coexists here. Does, do you, does it disturb you when you hear reports of fighting amongst people because of uh, communal riots in India or, or any communal tension in India or even when you find when there are elections you find various political parties will raise religious or issues which are not bringing communities together but often separating them. What is your message to political leaders? Or when you see in India this, uh, this happening, what do you feel? You've been in India for, over, for almost 60 uh, years now. Yes, that was seven, actually I think 50, 57 years now. Uh, so nearly your 60th uh, anniversary. Yes, I certainly, you see, uh, I, so quite often I describe myself as a, uh, firstly, messenger of Indian uh, ancient thought. Uh, then secondly, I consider myself as a son of India. <laughs> Reason, all my sort of cell. I, th I think the other, the other interview, I, th I think I mentioned that in any way, you see, every brain of my, I mean brain, every part of brain filled by Nalanda thought. Mm -hmm. So that's Indian thought. <laughs> <laughs> that this physical over 50 years that uh, I think a few, a few years ago you see some interview I mentioned that then you see at least over 50 years this physical survived uh, with Indian dals, Indian <laughs> rice, Indian chapati <laughs> so therefore mentally, spiritually, physically I'm son of India <laughs> then I think I'm longest guest of Indian government. <laughs> so therefore, you see, I do have a serious concern about this country. And but overall, small sort of pockets here and there, some problems as, as a human being. Sometimes I used to telling people, India, over one billion populated nation, some mischievous people must be there. <laughs> Without that, then Indian, not human being, but God. <laughs> <laughs> so we are human beings. So some mischievous people are always there. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think, picture of this country, mm -hmm. I, I still believe peaceful, comparatively, uh, stable, compare Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, I think this country, very, very stable, mm -hmm. very peaceful. Mm -hmm. And I think India, I think the most populated democratic country. Mm -hmm. Still, you see, you have, you see, that associated practice. And then also, the thousand year old, I think 2,000, 3,000 year old India sort of concept of Ahimsa. Uh, still, you see, in the, in the people's mind, even unconsciously, that concept is still there. So these, uh, I feel, you see, real basis of happy India, peaceful India, Sometimes there's a little, little sort of disturbance here and there, mm -hmm. and including sometimes some politicians or even some <laughs> religious leaders. Well, that is possible. But overall picture of India, I think, very healthy. Mm -hmm. That's my view. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we should not take for granted these good things. Uh, we people, especially younger generation like you, we must make effort and with awareness and vision remaining to the first century and then even to the, to the second century to the third century i think this nation you see can be i think a big contributor for world peace mm -hmm. through practice of compassion mm -hmm. and ahim, ahimsa wonderful 